Good day and welcome to the channel. We have a ResMed AirSense 10 here that has a loud pump, a loud motor. And so we're gonna change it. This isn't that hard to do. You can do it if you have any capacity to use a screwdriver at all and are the tiniest bit adventurous. So we sourced a replacement motor off AliExpress, that's part of Alibaba, for about $75 Canadian, including shipping. And you've got to be careful when buying these replacement parts from overseas because you can get used parts. Yes, they part these things out and sell you used parts. So if you find one for $20 or $30, yeah, it's probably used. Probably not what you want, whether it says tested or not. Whereas this one, I'm quite confident was new based on the condition that it appears to be here and how the pricing was consistent from other new vendors. But there's really no way for me to prove it. So I'm a bit of a gambler on this still. So what you need is a Torx T10. The other thing you'll need is some sort of a pry tool. And I've just got a little screwdriver here. You can use an old credit card if that works for you. One of the things we always tell you is to lay the screws out in the order in which they came out. However, I believe all of these are the same, so it doesn't make any difference. You don't need to worry about them. See the hooks here, that's why you start from the back and not from the front. If you start from the front, you're going to break these tabs off. You don't want to do that. I'll just pull Nothing there. This is your cellular board. You do not need to disconnect it. Just be careful with the wire. If it does come out, you can simply put it back in, but why bother take it off? Just leave it. Same thing with this. This wire will slide out and you can just push it back in. It's friction feed, but you don't need to. So why bother? Just leave it. Just be careful. This one you do have to take off. This should just lift out. Watching those, make sure you grab that so you don't lose it. There you go. Put that aside. Lift this over. Oh, right, there's a Molex connector here. So apply pressure to the back and slide it out. Yep. Now we have to remove this guy, which contains this motor. And there we go. Now let's move all of this away because we don't care about it just now. Still using the same screw. Now you have to push this through to get this out and pull this all out carefully, including this diaphragm. Put your finger in here and lift. There you go. This has to come out to your wiring clips. Just pull the wires through one at a time. Oh, there we go. That worked better than I thought. There we go. Now just slide this off like that. So remembering that that's where the wire goes, and you'll also notice that it's soft, because you never want to have a pinched wire. Now take a look at your new motor and where it will go. That wire will come up like that. This is quite pliable, by the way, so don't worry about it. You're not going to damage it. Put the new one in. So that's the old one. That's the new one. 
And again, make sure that the wire is coming up in the same spot. There we go. Jam it through. Make sure that wire is there so it's not getting pinched. And pull these through. This is a bit tedious, but you can do it. If I can do it with no patience, you can do it with a little patience. Oops, you see I screwed it up. That has to, has to, has to go there. There we go. And you see there's only one way for this to go in. Okay, just a note, that blue piece, uh, if you've got a smell that you can't get rid of and you've already cleaned out your reservoir or replaced it, replaced your hoses, that's probably it. So if you're a smoker or somebody was smoking, that's probably what you need to replace. And it is a consumable part, it is a replaceable part. So one wire at a time, the foam block back in. Before you finish up, crank these down. This needs to be watertight. You want to keep it sealed. This is what's keeping your machine quiet. And you want to make sure that there's nothing rattly in here. There we go. There are two posts here. Put your wire around. You'll see that there's an arrow here showing you where this wiring harness should go. So what you want to do is Put it up on end like this so you can see it, put the guide on, and then slide it in, just like that. There we go. Make sure that that is aligned, just like that. Now it's nice and tight, yay. Now put your nipples back on, carefully flip your circuit board over, make sure that the nipple connectors are connected. There we go, right there, squeeze that in. Try to keep this ribbon as straight as possible. And that should just end up on posts that are around, so it should feel fairly solid, and that does. Now you might think, okay, great, I'm ready to screw this back together. Nope. Two things you have left to do. One, put your Molex connector back on. That's your power connector. So take this, that little clip right there goes on the inside. And you'll hear it click. Leave this up on its end, straighten this out as best you can. Take this end cap and you'll notice there are holes here. That's because screws go through it. So you wanna make sure that the screws here are lined up with these posts. So, and then this goes in between the two. Let's just put that on, look at that. There, now this ribbon at the back, it comes up around and sits down flat there. If it's come out, it's not a problem, it's friction fit, you can just squeeze it back in. And we also need to put this little power connector on at the bottom. There it is, just pops on, easy peasy. Okay, now when you're putting the housing back on, there's uh, three things to do. One is remember you've got those clips at the front. So you've got to start at the front, you've got to pull this over the back, and you also have to align this channel with this channel. So, it's not hard, but it's a number of steps. So I'm gonna slide this down a bit, like that, and then pull this down, there we go. So it's on sort of at the back, and I'm going to align these channels, and now I'm going to clip this in. So I'm just going to force it. There it is. Sweet. Put your two screws back in the front. Pop your dial back on. There's no notch, it doesn't make any difference where you put it. Put your cover face plate on, just snaps on. Put your water back in. Easy peasy, 10 minute fix, done. So hey, if you found this video useful, big thumbs up, it'd be super appreciated. Subscribe's also appreciated. And if you have any questions or concerns, you can always get a hold of us directly at www.urtech, that's www.urtech.ca, or you can leave a question or a comment below. And if we don't get back to you, somebody else will, because on YouTube, you just know everybody's got an opinion. Thanks and have a great day. Bye-bye.